Hey, what is up you guys and welcome to this episode of Eddie's Customs and Restorations. Oh, well, we got the well, we got the work truck here and we got a little problem. The dang thing doesn't start. So watch. Fuel pump kicks on. See, and it wants to kick off. I don't know if y'all can hear that, but I'm gonna shine the, or point the camera over here and kind of try to listen. Okay. Well, that is generally an indication of moisture in your distributor. It's been cold the past couple of days, and I know I got other issues, but it's been cold the last couple of days, and uh, now it's hot, so that creates a lot of condensation. So chances are that back there on our distributor, which is where all our, our uh, spark plug wires are connected to, uh, chances are that in there, there's a lot of moisture buildup, hence not letting the spark do its thing because you know water is interrupting the spark so i'm gonna go ahead and take that off this is on my uh 97 pickup truck but this will pertain to all vehicles that have a distributor so all these classic cars and all that that have a distributor they're also going to have the same problem during uh temperature changes like those so let me get let me get a um, let me go get a phillips screwdriver so i can take this cap off and inspect what's going on in there but well, this distributor i already took that screw out you see a little hole back there and then there's another one which i don't think i can show you but it's in the front well i can't show you but it's a torx and i can't remember what size it is but it's like a torx 10 or a torx 15. that's what that's what uh, the two screws are. So you got one basically in the back and then another one over here in the front. Now I realize that the distributor being so far back in there can intimidate some people, but it's actually super easy to get to it and I'm gonna show you how. So first off, you're gonna disconnect this, uh, this breather right here. It has a little elbow and this is basically hooked onto your intake so this back part where it says Vortec, you're basically gonna pull on that up and that's supposed to be stabbed on with that rubber deal that's back here. It's supposed to be kind of like stabbed in place over there. And you basically just move the whole intake out of the way. And once you do that, you have all clear access, right? And then, well, of course, you're gonna be kind of scared to remove all these wires, you know, if, if this is your first time doing this. You're going to be kind of afraid to disconnect all these wires and and kind of in fear that you might forget which way they went well you got a couple options here if you have a marker on hand you can put one two three four if you want to just kind of label them for yourself for your own uh just, just for your own just for yourself so you can remember or if you have one of those plastic clips like i do right down there you can set them up to where they start from the back all the way to the front that way when you hook when you unhook them completely you can still sort them out now mind you they're not going to come out that easy i had actually already pulled them out but then i decided to make this part of the video just to help somebody else that might be in fear of forgetting which way these things went the coil wire the easiest form just disconnected from here you know from the coil and you can just let this one stay on the uh, on the cap itself when you remove it. I removed all the wires and this is where that front bolt was. Remember I showed you the back one, but I didn't show you the front one. So there it is. And there is the contact. Let me zoom in. So you can see the contact has a little bit of corrosion there and then let me hold that screw right here look the way our inside of the cap looks it's all full of corrosion 
All that is all that moisture buildup and corrosion all at the same time. Moisture only makes it worse. Right here, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but you can actually see the wet deposits. They're fully wet. So all those little white specks right there, they're wet now. So you see they're supposed to be white 100%, but they're like a dark white because of the moisture that has built up on it and it absorbed the moisture and that's what's causing it to not fire properly. I'm going to take a wire brush to it instead. I'm going to knock all that off. I had already started. You see and already you can start seeing the, the metal again. It's a little wore out. It's not a bad idea. It wouldn't be a bad idea to get another cap already because you can see they're not perfectly round anymore. But for the sake of the video, I want to show you that this was indeed the problem. All right, so here is my clean, right? Did it with a wire brush, like I, like I said, a little wire brush. And this is as best as it's going to get, for me anyways. And this is the top side, that way y'all can see that it's the same one going back on. So let me get that going. Oh, and by the way, it's a it's a good idea to just put the little screws on right there, and just you know help them guide you as to the little hole, where the little hole is. And if you're and if you forgot what way this went, the coil wire goes to the passenger side of the truck. All right, well we got that all buttoned up. Now let's uh, let's give it a go now. See what happens. more time see and that took a bit because the truck was a little flooded before so there was a lot of gas in the cylinders, but now it's running better than before, 100%. So, yeah. So yeah, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to put a new cap. I mean, it's only got 246,000 miles on the same cap and rotor since it came out new from the factory so you know I got little fluctuations and everything I got I got some codes on the computer there uh, there's like a correlation code between the crank and the cam so you know it's gonna fluctuate a little bit plus right now it's cold so it's gonna do this you know once it uh once it gets to operating temperature it, it warms up and fluctuations stop now let's do another let's let's shut it off and let's do another crank see how we fire up this time all right that was quick response let's do it one more time just to see how where we're at all good Here's the truck a little closer to operating temperature, you know, and my RPMs are now stable, you know, at around eight, nine hundred, and this is where it likes to be all the time. But as you can see, there's no more fluctuations in the RPMs. Anyhow, guys, if you all found value in this video, please like and subscribe and hit that bell icon if you would like to see more videos like these in the future. Well, until next time, y'all be safe.